Back in the day, hospitals didn't follow the best practices and most of the time, we can't blame them since they didn't know what we know today. With the many accidents and poor decisions, many spirits decide to stay and make these hospitals their home. I'm your host Andrew and here are your top 10 scary hospitals you wouldn't want to get aid in. At our number 10 spot, we have the Taunton State Hospital. The Taunton State Hospital is a notorious psychiatric hospital located in Taunton, Massachusetts. The hospital opened its doors in 1854 and over the years, it bore witness to hundreds hundreds of psychiatric patients, including a couple of notorious serial killers, and unfortunately, many of these people would lose their lives in this hospital. Sadly, innocent people such as veterans, those with Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and Tourette's, and even women experiencing anxiety, depression, and fatigue were admitted to this hospital, and conditions were far from good for treating them. The hospital used pseudosciences like phrenology to cure patients, but that was the lightest thing done here. They also use solitary confinement, electroshock therapy, and lobotomies as common practices. Today, Taunton State Hospital and its surrounding grounds are on the registry of historic places, and even though most of the historic buildings have been demolished or destroyed by a fire, there are rumors that a notorious satanic cult operated the hospital and even conducted dark rituals and even human sacrifices in the basement of the place. The hospital is considered to be one of the most haunted asylums in America with strange and unexplained markings on the walls of the basements and with ghostly screams, cries for help, and sobbing being commonly reported on the hospital grounds and even the surrounding woods. The entire campus is deemed haunted and is referred to as the most haunted asylum. At our number 9 spot, we have the Several Hospital. The Several Hospital in Colchester, Essex, England has nothing special about it other than a history of pure tragedy. Built in 1913, the hospital was designed by architects Frank Whitmore and William Town, and it was initially opened as a second Essex County Asylum. However, this beautiful building soon witnessed the horrors of war when it was bombed by the Luftwaffe in 1942, resulting in the deaths of 38 patients. Then in the 1950s, psychiatrists carried out inhumane experiments on the patients that were at the hospital. These were often done on people who were mainly healthy, they were admitted by their own families, or friends for non-medical reasons. Electroconvulsive therapy and frontal lobotomies were carried out here as well, and women were subjected to these treatments simply because they are unable to carry out daily tasks, resulting in them being considered insane. Then in the early 1980s, the hospital went into a state of decline and was eventually closed in 1997. Despite plans to redevelop the area into residential homes, most people are so hesitant to live in a place where so much tragedy has occurred. And I can't blame them. The building has now fallen into a state of disrepair with vines climbing its walls and an eerie feeling of abandonment. Urban explorers visiting the site have reported hearing the screams of a woman and encountering full bodied apparitions and even brightly colored orbs. These hauntings serve as a reminder of the terror and trauma that took place here, reminding us that people who treated mental health back in the past didn't know what they were doing. All the way at our number 8 spot, we have the Danvers State Hospital. The Danvers State Hospital, also known as the Danvers State Lunatic Asylum, is a historically significant mental health institution located in rural Massachusetts, but it's also considered by many to be the most haunted hospital in the entire US. At its height, the hospital was overcrowded and used inhumane treatments such as shock therapy, lobotomies, and straitjackets to control its population. Then in 2007, a large fire destroyed much of the remaining building leaving only the brick shell standing. The land that Danvers was built on also has a dark history to it, as it once was home to John Hathorne, the judge who presided over the Salem witch trials himself. But back to the hospital. It saw abuse, neglect, and trauma over its lifetime, which led to more overcrowding issues and more inhumane treatment of its patients. And this is probably the reason why every visitor comes out of this place with a ghostly story of their own. Visitors to the property report paranormal activity and mention apparitions, disembodied voices, and strange mists that seem to appear from nowhere. The two cemeteries on the property filled with 770 bodies are also hotbeds of ghostly activity, as you would already guess. Whether it's the day spirits of the lobotomy patients or something else entirely, the Danvers State Hospital is sure to send shivers down the spines of even the bravest of paranormal enthusiasts. On number 7 spot, we have the Royal Hope Hospital. The Royal Hope Hospital in St. Augustine, Florida is one of the oldest hospitals in the state, with roots dating back to the late 1700s. So you know what that means? It was used during the Civil War as well. It was serving as a military hospital and treated thousands of wounded soldiers. The modern hospital was rebuilt on the same ground as the original structure, which some believe could explain the numerous ghostly encounters reported by guests and staff members over the years. One of the most notable haunted areas of the hospital is the morning room, where family members would gather to remember their loved ones. This room is said to be filled with the hospital's priest tools for blessing the dead and is known for its ghostly voices, which can be heard praying, sobbing, and moaning. Another haunted area is the surgeon's office, where a 
spirit is said to grab onto visitors clothes and refuse to let go. In the ward, beds are reported to move on their own and hit visitors. While the apothecary is known for its shadows darting from wall to wall and the sound of a sobbing spirit in the room. Other ghostly occurrences at the Royal Hope Hospital include full-blown apparitions, voice recordings from paranormal enthusiasts, moving objects, unexplained bruises, and orbs that follow visitors all around the hospital. There's also been reports of unexplained marching sounds down the hospital hallways, which may be residual from its time as a military hospital. Overall, the Royal Hospital is a prime example how the intense emotions and suffering of the past can leave a lasting imprint on a location and contribute to its haunted reputation. So definitely go check this place out if you have nothing better to do. Number 6, The Sunland Hospital. The Sunland Mental Hospital was once a chain of hospitals all across Florida, which established in the 1950s to isolate and cure for patients with tuberculosis. But as tuberculosis became less of a public health issue, the state converted the facilities into mental health institutions, and this is when the hospitals went from good to bad. Among those hospitals, Sunlight Hospital Orlando was especially notorious for its horrid conditions and maltreatment of its patients, which even escalated to outright physical abuse and torture. By the 1980s, the world knew about the horrible conditions, and Sunlight Orlando was eventually closed and left to decay. The abandoned building quickly became a meta for ghost hunters as visitors reported hearing screams and seeing shadows everywhere they went, many of which seemed to originate from children. Even in 1997, a man even plunged to his death in an elevator shaft while exploring the the hospital with his friends, and many people believe that the ghost tempted him to do this in the first place. The main building was eventually demolished in 1999, but the administration building still stands to this day, attracting ghost hunters all around the world. The former site of the actual Sunland Hospital is now a children's playground, and nighttime visitors have reported seeing ghostly apparitions of children near the area and swings moving on their own, which is presumably by the children themselves. So just another unsettling reason not to visit Florida. In the hub for our list, we have the St. Thomas Psychiatric Hospital. The St. Thomas Psychiatric Hospital opened in 1939 and served over 1,700 patients. The institution was then abandoned in the summer of 2013, and a new mental health facility was developed soon after to replace it. In the time the facility was active, it housed a few notorious patients who committed violent deeds, including impaling, strangling, and torturing other patients or co-workers. People claimed to hear random sounds, which include banging, crying, and even whispering and seeing flickering lights and moving objects during their visit. Today there is heightened security at the site but it may be possible to have a short wander across the grounds where the old hospital once stood during daylight hours. But I recommend not going there just in case because this place looks pretty bad. All the way down at our number 4 spot we have the Trenton Psychiatric Hospital. The Trenton Psychiatric Hospital, originally named the New Jersey State Lunatic Asylum, has a long history of helping mentally ill patients. <laughs> and even harming them. The hospital opened in 1849 and welcomed 86 patients initially. The first superintendent, Horace Butthoff, was a good man and provided excellent care for the people around him. Then it took a turn for the worse when Dr. Henry Cotton took over. The doctor believed he could cure mental illness by removing organs. He believed that infections caused mental illness, so he tested it by removing his patient's teeth, limbs, or any body part with slight signs of infection. This would cause dozens of patients to pass away, and many claim that you can still hear the screens of these patients inside of the walls of the hospital to this day. Others even claim to see the apparition of Dr. Cotton himself and other ghosts with missing limbs. Unfortunately, after his passing in 1933, a review found his medical procedures caused 45% of his patients to perish. The irony was, the doctor was clinically insane as well. Number 3, The Old Tua Hospital The Old Tua Hospital in Utah was originally built as a private residence by Samuel F. Lee in 1873, but it was later converted into a poorhouse for the elderly in 1913. Then we fast forward to 1953 and the new Tua hospital was constructed and the original building was torn down. And this is when the haunting originated. The new hospital served as both a public hospital and an elderly care facility until it was converted into the popular tourist attraction Asylum 49. The new Tua hospital was plagued by funding issues with bodies of the deceased being stored in unrefrigerated rooms until the county coroner arrived to sign their death certificates. Asylum 49 is now a popular haunted attraction for many paranormal enthusiasts, with many reports of strange occurrences from visitors and employees, and one of the most commonly reported ghosts here is a patient named Wes, who suffered from Alzheimer's and died in a confused and scared state. Under the ghost Samuel F. Lee, the one who used to own the place, is said to roam the halls as well. telling visitors of his good deeds and seeking recognition for them. A nurse in white named Maria is also said to guard a spirit portal that directs the deceased to the afterlife. Number 2, The Clark Air Base Hospital. This is one of the few places deemed to be haunted not just in the Philippines, 
but in the whole world by Ghost Hunters International. Season 1, episode 20, named Unknown Soldiers, if you guys want to check out the episode. The hospital is used during World War II and the Vietnam War, so you already know this has all sorts of death and all sorts of tragedy. It served as an asylum to the wounded and dying American soldiers. This is why people around the world claim it is the most haunted place in the Philippines. It's said that the traumas and countless deaths from those conflicts have left their mark on the spirit's presence in the hospital. The place is currently abandoned, which gives it more of a supernatural look to it, but it's said that if you visit the hospital and sleep within 8 hours after the visit, you will experience extreme nightmares and intense lucid dreaming for a week, and some people don't even get out of this. Number 1, the Linda Vista Hospital. Here's a hospital on this list that's actually still open and operating. The Linda Vista Hospital, located in Los Angeles, California, is a medical center that has a long and storied history. Originally built as the Santa Fe Coastlines Hospital in 1905, the hospital was designed for the employees of the Santa Fe Railroad and was one of Los Angeles' oldest medical facilities. Over the years, the hospital saw a decline in funding and patients and eventually ceased all operations in 1991. In the years following its closure, the hospital gained a reputation for being extremely haunted. With stories of shadows walking around, nighttime cries, and disembodied humming, many people believe the hospital to be haunted by the spirits of its former patients and staff. There's also been allegations of patient abuse here that have never been fully investigated and to this day we will never know because all the past documents in this place have either been destroyed or have gone missing. Today the former hospital is actually a senior living facility and is now not open to visitors for obvious reasons. But still many ghost hunters still request and some have been lucky to investigate this haunting place at night and have reported all sorts of activity. These are the 10 scary hospitals you wouldn't want to get aid in. What did you guys think about this list? Leave a comment down below and let me know which hospital was the scariest for you. I want to know. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video for some more content. I'm your host Andrew and I hope you guys have a scary day.